Have you become immune to antibiotics? Do you at times feel that you are popping pill, but it's not working? Why are you taking stronger and stronger medicines day by day? Remember the days when we used to take just half a Crocin 500 for fever? Now we pop a paracetamol 650 mg twice a day if required. That's where we are headed when it comes to these drugs and increasing their dosages. Slowly our bodies are becoming resistant to drugs, even to antibiotics. But today we are going to discuss how there is a super bacteria which may be causing it. Beware of the superbug, a bacteria which causes us to become antibiotic proof. As per a study which has been published in Lancet, 83% of Indians have these bacteria which are making us resistant to any antibiotics. You can pop as many antibiotics as you want, but if you have this bacteria, these antibiotics will not work on us. Over the course of the show, we are going to tell you about this latest superbug and what you can do to keep yourself safe. But first, let's tell you a bit about the new large-scale international study which has been published in the prestigious Lancet e-clinical medicine journal. This says that 83% of Indians may be immune to antibiotics. First, let's tell you about the methodology which has been used by them. Well, uh, they have conducted the survey on 1,200 patients. This was conducted by a multi-center study. And the methodology has been such that it has been spanning across four nations. In these four nations, the scale of this has now come to light that India may just be the epicenter of all of this. Let's tell you about the next one, which is the Lancet Clinic eClinical Medical Journal, which says that India may be the epicenter of this bug, the super bug that we are talking about, the super bacteria, because 83% of Indians are immune to it as per the study. As per the study in Italy, this number is only 31.5% people who are infected by this bug. In US, it is only 20.1%. In Netherlands, it is only 10.8%. So India has the highest number of people, which is 83% as per the study, where people are simply immune to antibiotics. Well, the findings of this study have been so shocking, the revelations about Indian patients have sounded the loudest alarm bell in medical fraternity. Because, as you can see, India seems to be the epicenter. But what are the multi-drug resistant organisms? They're important for us to understand. What are they resistant to and what do they thrive upon? Let's tell you first what it means. Well, it is a bacteria which is resistant to some antibiotics. It cannot be controlled or killed by any antibiotics. This bacteria doesn't respond to powerful antibiotics also. Where is it found? It is most commonly found in where it is germinating in hospitals, in long-term care facilities. And who's most susceptible to these bacteria? Well, it is senior citizens and those who are chronically ill patients, those whose immunities are already weak. So if you, my viewers, are also immune to the certain antibiotics, there is a possibility that you too have become resistant to these antibiotics. Let's tell you about the two drugs that we are specifically talking about. The name of the first drug that we are telling you, a bacteria that we are telling you about is this, ESBL producing organisms. It affects about 70.2% people in India have it. What does it mean? That if you have this bacteria, the ESBL, then you are becoming resistant to common antibiotics, those which are commonly used. Also, then you have your immunity to penicillin as well as the cetalosporin. These are the two antibiotics that you are going to be immune to if you have this ESBL. There's another one that we are talking about, carbapenem, resistant bacteria. This impacts and affects about 30, 23.5% of people in India as per the study and this means that you have become resistant to last resort antibiotics which are critical, critical in care, resistant to last resort antibiotics which are very, very strong. It is very difficult to treat people who are infected with it because these are life saving antibiotics which will not work on you if you have this 
form of bacteria in it. But how do you get it so bad? What really happened that we have this super bug explosion in India? Well, these are the reasons. The misuse of antibiotics is the first one. Self-medication without going to the doctor prescribing it. Without prescription over the counter, self-medication is the biggest reason. Stopping antibiotics midway, that's another one of the reasons why you can get susceptible to this. Also consuming leftover tablets can cause the these bacteria in you. Your frequent trip to the drugstore and the temptation to pop a pill has now posed to be a big threat to your life. Why is it? Well, let's tell you. Well, first, the doctors are forced to prescribe stronger and stronger drugs. The recovery process gets longer and there are higher complications which come in if you have this and higher treatment expenses as well that you have to deal with. So what should you do about this? Are multi-drug resistant organisms silent killers? And if you're infected, what are the steps that you can take? Well, let's tell you about that. Well, what happens? We are going to give you a case study. What happens if you're not infected and what if you're infected? If you do not have the super bug in you, you have a quick recovery. But if you have a super bug, it'll take you longer to recover. The second pointer. It responds to standard antibiotics. If you're not infected, if you're already infected with the superbug, you'll only respond to high-end drugs and not the standard antibiotics. Then the hospital stay, if you're not infected by the superbug, you will spend perhaps only three days in hospital. But unfortunately, if you're infected with it, you will end up saying about 15 days in hospital because medicine simply will not be working on you and me. In case you are not infected, the treatment cost will be about 70,000. Worst case scenario, if you're infected, then the treatment cost can be anywhere between four to five lakh rupees. That's what we are talking about in terms of health, in terms of hospital stays, and in terms of medical payments and bills. Well, the study also highlights that antibiotic resistance cannot be explained by any of the medical history or any underlying illnesses alone, nor even any other comorbidities are linked to it. So essentially, it's not linked to any medical history we may have had and no, nothing to do with the comorbidities either. Anyone can simply get it. Well, now, we don't want to sound very alarmist, but it is our job to keep you informed. And here's why this is so very important for you to know exactly why we are raising this concern and bringing it to your attention. Because in India, 58,000 newborn deaths have happened annually. There's a severe threat to vulnerable patients, specifically in our nation. There's widespread in ICU as well as cancer center, the, the, the most vulnerable of us all, essentially. Also, there is limited treatment options which are available in case you get any of these super bugs. So naturally, this would then raise a question in our mind. Can the government do anything about it? What can we do? Yes, let's tell you what first the government must do about it. It must enforce prescription-only antibiotic policies, which is absent in India. Anyone just simply goes and pops a pill, pops an antibiotic without a prescription. Also, the government can implement antibiotic stewardship programs, increase the awareness around it, tighten the pharmacy regulations to sell antibiotics, also adopt a digital tracking of antibiotic use who's using it and who's not also launch mass public awareness campaigns like we are doing the show for why so that we can raise awareness so you the people know how important it is that you don't take pills without a prescription but naturally we understand that you may have concerns over this as well what is it that you must do what it is that you shouldn't do to keep yourself safe from this multi-drug resistant organisms well first thing you can do i'm not talking about the government what you as a patient can do do not take medicines without any prescription stop taking pharmacy driven antibiotics just because it's easy you think you know it when you go out buy a antibiotic over the counter stop that stop that today you must also complete every treatment course. It's not like if it was advised for five days, you take it only for three, you feel better, you stop it. Stop doing that. Also, you must maintain hygiene habits. You must keep vaccinations up to date and also handle pets and livestock very responsibly as well. Which is why I'm going to be going across 
to the person who has co-authored this study. Dr. D. Nageshwar Reddy is joining us, the chairperson of AIG Hospitals, the co-author of the study. Also joining us on the show will be Dr. Rakesh Patel, a consultant at the Fortis Hospital. First, I'm going to come across to you, Dr. Reddy, if you can explain to our viewers what your research has found and how much of an alarm should we raise at this time and why it's important we do it now before it's too late. Thank you, Meghna. Thank you for having me on the show for this very important uh, message to the public. So what we did was we actually wanted to look at the antibiotic resistance in the community, not in patients who are admitted in a hospital, but in the community. These are people who are going to the hospital for simple procedures like endoscopy and so on. So we looked at what was the antibiogram or what is the antibiotic resistance in these people. So these are four centers, like you said, one was the AAG hospitals in Hyderabad, India. The second was the hospital in the Netherlands, one in Milan, Italy, and the third one was in Pittsburgh, in the United States. So what we did in all this, we formed a, actually a lot of discussions before we made a uniform protocol. All patients coming for simple procedures like endoscopy related, we looked at the microbiome in terms of what happens in the gut and in the nose with anomaly, this bacteria reside. And looked at the antibiotic resistance in these two places where you normally expect the bacteria to be. And to a surprise, we found that in India, 83% of those people who are coming into the hospital for simple procedures were already positive. They haven't been to the hospital earlier. They're coming for the first time and they're already positive for uh, one of these resistant bacteria, and like you said, they're either Enterobacteria, they're Pseudomonas, Acetinobacter, or even Staph aureus, they're resistant. Whereas compared to our country, what is very surprising, the international investigators found that only 10% were resistant in the Netherlands, 20% in Italy, 20% uh, United States, and 30% Italy. Right. So you see, market difference was there. So this mm. means that in our community now, 83% of people people who, who are looking normal actually have these bacteria which are resistant. So when they come to the hospital, get a procedure mm. done, yeah. these bacteria can go into the bloodstream, cause septicemia, cause infections, prolonged stay, prolonged cost and so on. Mm. So this is the consequence of this. It has great economic and health implications. Absolutely. If you can explain that, Dr. Nageshwar Reddy, because we need to understand if this has now been found, what's the way forward? That's what everyone sitting out there is wondering. What do we do as a patient? So the most important thing is that this is a dynamic, reversible process. If a couple of years back in Netherlands, for example, the resistance was about 30%. They took some very strong measures. It came down to 10%. So we can do the same thing in India. And what should we do? It, it is actually multiple stakeholders are involved, the public, the doctors, the pharmacy, and of course, the government. Government uh, is doing all its best. In fact, just yesterday, the government has come up with NAP2 policy. The NAP2 policy, uh, national antibiotic policy, where they have very strict regulations. Normally, the antibiotics are sold under Schedule H or Schedule H1, depending upon the strength mm. of the antibiotic. That means this antibiotic should be given only on prescription from a doctor. Right. Unfortunately, in many of the medical shops, you can go just go and tell them, I have fever, give an antibiotic, they give it. This Absolutely. should be very, very strongly stopped. Mm -hmm. Immediate action should be taken, and I think government is taking this action, that no prescription, uh, only with prescription antibiotics very are given. Important. Them. Very important that you have point, uh, pointed out. Uh, in fact, let me quickly go across to Dr. Patel as well, who's joining us here on the broadcast. Dr. Patel, your advice, do's and don'ts, the to the government as well. So, uh, thank you uh, very much to take me on air. My, I, sir has already explained that the antibiotics have to be given only on the prescription of the doctor. At the same time, there should be a local antibiotic sensitivity pattern and policy for every hospital and every area so that common infections which are seen by the family physicians, there is a common protocol for treating those infections with a proper antibiogram that is available in those areas. So a proper antibiotic usage by the doctor as well as by the patient will help in a long way to 
reduce these antibiotic resistance. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, appreciate it. Both you doctors, Dr. D. Nageshwar Reddy, he's co-authored this entire study for explaining what your study, what your research, cutting across several countries at that. But the good takeaway from what you had said is that this is reversible. If we act now, the government as well as we the people become more responsible about the way we are popping these antibiotics. Like Netherlands, we can also reverse the superbug and take preventive steps. Appreciate you taking out time and joining us. Dr. Patel, thank you so much for joining us here on the show. Today, hopefully you've learned something new and if those antibiotics are not working, well, beware. Perhaps it's time to introspect about our drug dosages. With that, a short break, don't go anywhere.